In this segment of Overcoming the Dragon, we're going to be revealing to you and exposing the spirit of Babylon. You don't want to miss this episode. Stay tuned. The Prince of Darkness is bringing his full wrath in these last days, and Overcoming the Dragon Ministry stands ready to defend the gospel and overcome his lies with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Brother Skinner relentlessly marches forward through enemy lines, tearing down Satan's strongholds and setting the captives free. Your investment in this ministry, large or small, will be rewarded in this life and the life to come. God bless you. So, you want to really pay attention to what I'm about to say. You really need to understand this. You need to allow this truth, this understanding to come into your heart. You've got to have an understanding of this or you're going to be in trouble. You are going to be so in trouble in these last days if you don't understand this simple truth. Babylon equals tyranny. Babylon equals tyranny. Tyranny is nothing more than cruel ruling. A cruel ruling. It's a dictatorship of cruelty. Now, it doesn't matter if it's in the government or if it's in the church. Babylon is tyranny. If you are in a church where the minister is operating in a controlling spirit and not in the Holy Spirit with the attitude, with the heart and the mind of a servant, a minister. You need to get out of there. Are you listening? There are many, and I mean many, there are many wolves in sheep's clothing in this hour. They are everywhere. They're everywhere. They rule through a bullying spirit. The Philistine spirit. The giant spirit. Are you listening, people? A giant doesn't have to be 9 feet, 10 feet, 14 feet. Listen. A bullying spirit is a giant. But not in God's eyes. In God's eyes, they're cowards. A bullying spirit, one that bullies, that is not the love of God, people. That's not the heart of a servant. That's not the heart of a minister. Whether it's in the White House or whether it's in the church. Anywhere you see somebody that's in authority, or not even in authority, don't even have to be in authority. Anywhere you see anybody operating in a bully spirit. I'm going to tell you right now, people, this is the mark. This is the mark of Babylon. Tyranny. 
tyranny takes away your will, takes away your choice. You no longer have a choice anymore. Did you know that God gives to every human being the right to choose? When somebody takes away your right to choose, that's tyranny. Are you listening? There are many uh, today that are controlled by cult leaders. I just listened to a video on YouTube, couldn't believe my ears, how this old man and his wife, she, you could just tell that she, she was under his control. And he was telling people, tear up your Bible. It's the mark of the beast. Tear it up. And she's standing right by her husband, agreeing, tear up your Bible. And then she goes on to say, if you tear up your Bible, that doesn't mean you're saved. You see how Satan is working, people? And this idiot, this cult leader, has people following him. Many false prophets and deceivers have gone out deceiving, being deceived. Always understand this. A true minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ leads by example. Oh yeah. I shared with you the other day about George Washington. Got down off his own horse. Help the men to chop the cherry tree down. As Donald Trump sits in his ivory palace up in his ivory tower. Folks, I want you to understand what's going on here. Tyranny is taking over. The opposite of tyranny, people, is servants. Amen. Being a servant. Paul said, God gave me authority. What did he give you authority for, Paul? To edify. To build up. To encourage. Are you listening, folks? Authority to do good. Authority to encourage and build up and strengthen. Amen. God doesn't give us authority to tear down and destroy. Yes, we need to tear down and destroy the things of the devil. Jeremiah was called by God to root out and tear down and to destroy the things of the devil. But he was also called by God to plant, to build. How many know the true minister of the gospel has to tear some things down? Amen? Those things that are destroying people. I told you in the last message, but it got cut off. The transmission got cut off. The devil didn't want you to hear it, but... I'll try it again. Several years ago, I prayed and I asked God. I said, God, and the Lord revealed this to me. I said, God, there are many idols in America. Washington Monument, Statue of Liberty, different ones, different things, symbols that cause man to be exalted and feel like he's secure. They empower man. You know, that's why you see the Washington Monument in all these movies out there. That's why you see the Washington Mu uh, Monument in the back scenes of a lot of presidential frames. Now, I want you to understand, folks. I know that I was led by the Holy Ghost when I prayed the prayer that God would bring those idols down in America. I asked God to topple them. I asked God to bring them down. I know in my heart and my spirit, I was in the spirit when I prayed that prayer. 
The next day, there was an earthquake in Virginia. You can look it up right now. Wikipedia, you can find it in Wikipedia. This earthquake was unprecedented. This, this earthquake, never had they ever had an earthquake in Virginia at this magnitude in this area ever. And that one earthquake struck both the Washington Monument and the Statue of Liberty at the same of the same earthquake. Maybe not the same moment, but it, it struck both of them in the same day, the same earthquake. That was a warning from God, people. I don't remember if it was the Washington Monument or the Statue of Liberty, but one was they actually said it would be closed indefinitely because they thought the damage was so bad. Now they're both, I believe, reopened. But the damage was so great to both of those, it took months and a lot of money to repair those things. Not the next time. The next time they're, they're, they're not going to repair it. Oh, I feel the Spirit of the Lord. They're coming down, people. They're coming down. God is going to bring down the idols in America. Are you listening? Who do you think it is that's bringing down Bill O'Reilly besides himself? Oh, yeah. He's been an idol. He's been an idol in, this, in, in the United States where people look to him like he is the truth. The no spin zone. And I could go down a list folks, of the things just in recent past that have happened in the United States, that God is allowing some things to be shaken up. Things are coming down. And I look forward to the day when the Washington Monument, the Statue of Liberty, crumble. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Both of them are pagan in nature. Both of them. In origin, I should say. Washington Monument is a male phallus having to do with sun worship. It's a sundial. Part of an Egyptian clock. Are you listening? Statue of Liberty is a man dressed in drag. A gift from the Masonic, from the Freemasons. This is not what America is about, people. This land is not your land. Listen, all the land, not just in the United States, but all over the world, is God's land. Amen. And there's a lot of squatters on God's property. But not for long. Hallelujah. God is going to deal with the squatters. Just like he did when he drove out the Canaanites. And those that were occupying the land. And then he drove out the Indians here in America. What blew my mind, really, people, is that this cult leader I was just listening to said Obama was the real uh, chosen of God and that he was a good president because he was letting the Native Americans uh, become part of the United States more so. It's interesting to me how that when individuals get under the power of Satan that they always promote paganism, right? Isn't that interesting? This man that's supposed to be a Christian standing there with his wife in a cultic spirit saying, rip up your Bibles, trying to expose Donald Trump and he's saying Obama was the man. Obama was for the poor. Obama cared about the poor. Donald Trump doesn't care about the poor. 
And I'll tell you right now, folks, this guy scares me. I'm not even going to tell you the name of the video or the name of this person. He scares me. All right? Just one of the many cult leaders out there. They start out with their own wives. That's where they start. They try to get their wives under the, under the trance. Once they've got them, then they go after more. Then they, you know, they, if they can get their children under it. That's a cultic spirit. Throw away your Bible. All you got to do is trust in the Holy Spirit. Well, I guarantee you the spirit that that man's under is not the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit would never tell you to rip up your Bible. How many know the, the Holy Scripture, the Bible, is your road map? Amen? Praise the Lord. It's the blueprint. Praise the Lord. It, in fact, and I will say the King James Version Bible is the most valuable artifact in the world. Maybe you ought to take the, blow the dust off of your Bible and get it out and study it. There's a lot of folks today looking for a treasure map, looking for a blueprint or something, something of codes or something to find some gold at the end of the rainbow. Open your Bible. I'm going to continue to emphasize in this ministry and on this broadcast to get you to open your Bible. A cult leader will tell you, you you don't need to read your Bible, just listen to me. I'm telling you, get your Bible out. I'm telling you that you need to study the Word of God. And when the scripture says that you need not that any man teach you, the the anointing will teach you, that doesn't mean you don't need a preacher. That doesn't mean you don't need a teacher. It means that when the preacher or the teacher is teaching or preaching, that the Holy Spirit will let you know that what he's saying is true. Are you listening? And... You shouldn't be hearing for the first time. Even what I'm sharing right now, you should be saying, Amen. That's what I've been listening. That's what God's been showing me too, Brother Joseph. Amen. That's where the Amen comes from. When our listeners leave comments and they say, that's what God's been showing me. That's the way it's supposed to work. I shouldn't be saying something on this broadcast that you've never heard before. In fact, as we go forward, people, listen to this. More and more every single day, it's going to be repetitive, bringing back what Jesus has already said. And it's going to get redundant. So just buckle your seatbelt and get ready. It's going to get redundant, brothers and sisters. Because the Holy Ghost is not going to speak His own words. He's only going to bring to our remembrance the things Jesus has already said. And we're going to keep on saying what Jesus already said until it sinks in glory to God. We're going to keep on telling you the same things day in and day out, brothers and sisters, because the Lord doesn't change. His word doesn't change. We're not going to change the message, glory to God. We're just going to keep I'm telling you what Jesus Christ has already said. So, if you don't want to hear what Jesus has got to say, I remember just recently I heard this person was talking about how they were in a, um, uh, with this old man that, and I don't remember who it was, someone in Hollywood or something, and they said, yeah, every time we get with him, he talks about, his stories, he shares his stories, and we loved him, we enjoy hearing him the first time around, but then the next time we get with him, he shares the same stories again. And we don't mind, because when he's gone, there won't be any stories like that anymore. Now, so, the idea is, we'll endure the same stories over and over again. Why? Because those stories that he's sharing, they're truth. They really happen. Those are real experiences. But he's sharing it from his heart. And these individuals 
are getting fed from that. Not fed the Word of God, but you understand what I'm saying. Some kind of a meal. Makes them feel good, whatever. But the same story. Over and over and over. And I thought the other day, well, Lord, I must be getting old. Because I find myself telling the same stories over and over all the time. And then I realized, no, it's not that I'm getting old in that sense. It's that what more do I have to give than what I have? I'm not going to be one of those in this hour that makes things up, people. If you're looking for somebody to make things up, you better go find another minister. Because I'm not going to make anything up. All I can share with you are my experiences. Things that I've experienced. And all I can share with you is what the Lord is saying. Amen? What the Holy Spirit is saying. But I will tell you this, every word that comes out of my mouth on this broadcast, if it does not line up with the Bible, it's got to line up with truth, people. I'm not the authority. I'm not the uh, final word like these cult leaders say they are. Understand that the spirit of Babylon is taking on over everywhere. Amen? And I will tell you the spirit of Babylon is not going to take over in this broadcast. You aren't going to hear the spirit of Babylon here. We're not going to try to control you. We're not going to tell you what to do. We're here to serve you. We're here to minister to you. And that doesn't mean we're going to compromise. That mean, doesn't mean we're going to uh, tickle your ears. Folks, I will tell you right now, if all you heard in this broadcast, in this message right now, if all you ever heard was just the beginning of the message that says, Babylon is tyranny. Babylon equals tyranny. You've heard enough. If you truly understand Wherever there's tyranny going on, cruel rule. Ruling in cruelty. Wherever that's going on, you know that's Babylon. In your own life, if you're one of those that doesn't have a heart of a servant, if you don't have a heart to serve, then you can easily allow Babylon to set up shop in your spirit, to set up in your heart. We must have a heart to serve. Amen? Servants. Serving. Being a servant. I know it's not popular. Jesus said... You all call me Lord. And he says, I am. I'm, I'm Lord. He says, but I'm one that's among you that's serving. I'm washing your feet. And he says, do as I have done. He didn't say all of a sudden, uh, go out and, uh, you know, start washing feet. He was showing that to them as an example. Because in the Jewish customs back in that day, If you came to someone's house to visit and they had a servant, the servant would wash your feet when you before you walked entered into the home. And so Jesus was showing them the position of a servant. And Peter said to Jesus, He said, You're not washing my feet. And Jesus said, Well, if I don't wash your feet, Peter, you'll have no part with me. What was Jesus talking about? He wasn't talking about his physical feet. You remember what God said to Moses? Get your shoes off. 
place you're standing is holy ground. Remember what God said to Joshua? Get your shoes off. You're standing on holy ground. In order for Jesus to wash the disciples' feet, they had to get the shoes off. You think you're going to enter the Father's house without getting your feet clean? And yet Peter said, not just my feet. Peter began to understand what Jesus was saying. He said, wash me all over, Lord. Not just on the outside. Wash my soul. Wash my spirit. Make me clean. Make me pure. Amen? When the Lord says, take off your shoes, you're standing on holy ground, that that has to do with redemption. That's why Boaz and the near kinsman, Redeemer, uh, Boaz and, and the other man, that's why the shoe was taken off. Redemption. It was a custom. Hallelujah. How is God going to wash your feet if you won't take your shoes off? That has to do with the worldliness, the dust of the world. The, the dust, the dirt that's on the shoes. And then God will give us some new shoes, brothers and sisters. The gospel of peace. Shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen? And wherever we go, wherever our feet go, we bring peace. Amen? Beautiful are the feet Of they that bring glad tidings. Amen. Hallelujah. Servants. You've got to admit, brothers and sisters, this world could use to stand to see some servants. Some real servants. Those that have hearts to serve. Not those that are looking to be served. Amen. Praise the Lord. You don't have to worry about being deceived in this hour if you're not uh, giving yourself over to tyranny. If you'll humble yourself. Jesus said, The greatest one among you shall be your servant. Amen. Hallelujah. Make me a servant, Jesus. Make me a minister. Make me an able minister. Amen? Hallelujah. We're not here to rule over you. We're not here for filthy lucre. Amen? We're not a hireling. Hallelujah. As a shepherd... Just as a shepherd. Praise the Lord. You don't have to be sheep without a shepherd out there. There is a shepherd that cares. Amen. Let the Lord feed you. Let the Lord minister to you. Let the Lord lead you beside the still waters and cause you to rest in the green, luscious grass. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let the Lord restore your souls for His name's sake. Amen. He's still the good shepherd, people. He has some under-shepherds. You don't have to be one of those in this hour that's scattered. Hallelujah. You can be nourished in this hour. Nourished by the Good Shepherd. Amen? What Jesus said to Peter, Do you love me? 
feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need His ministry, people. We need the Lord to minister to us. Amen? We need the Lord to be good to us. Because when the Lord is good to us, He changes us. He transforms us so that we can be good to others. Amen? And we overcome evil with good. We need His goodness. You and I need to let the goodness of God transform our lives. To let the goodness of Jesus transform us. Amen? So that we can walk in the light. And men will see our good works from the good shepherd. Praise the Lord. Babylon does not have to have control of your life. Anytime you find yourself trying to control another person or taking away another person's right or their will, that's not the Holy Spirit, people. We were never called by God. None of us are called by God to control another person's life. And that doesn't matter if, if, if that's your spouse, if that's your children. We're not called to control. Are you listening? You shouldn't have to beat your children down to control them. To get them under control. If you lead by example, they will follow. What they don't understand is when mommy and daddy are saying one thing and doing another. That's what confuses them. Amen. That's right, people. Mommy and daddy say one thing and then they do a complete other thing. Oh, well, mommy, daddy, you want me to do that, but you don't do that. Hypocrisy begins right in the home, people. It starts in the home. All that's going on in America right now, everything that's going on that's evil, started in a home. Started in a home, maybe where the mom and dad weren't present. Or where they were children were brought up in foster homes. Some It started in the way they were brought up. The way they were raised. Are you listening? And we can't look at those in this, let's just say United States. Could say the whole world, but let's talk about the United States. You can't just say, you know, there's nothing that we can do. It's out of our hands, out of our control. You can brighten the spot you're in. Amen. You can serve right where you are. You can't change the world around you, maybe. You may never have the position to really have an influence on a lot of people, but you can right where you are. That's all God requires. Amen? Starts in the home. And then it works its way out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Nothing more wonderful than to see young people that are well-mannered. Amen? Nothing more wonderful. To see young people that are respectful, well-mannered, Because that's the way their parents are. Amen. That's beautiful. That's the beauty of holiness. 
Amen. Caring. Caring. Humble. Kind. Amen. If you learned anything different, brothers and sisters, you didn't learn it from Jesus. You didn't learn it from the Good Shepherd. Hallelujah. If there was anything in Jesus that was intimidating, I guarantee you the children wouldn't have ran up to him and jumped on his lap. We know Santa Claus is trying to take that place today, which is nothing more than Satan. I can't I still don't understand for the life of me why parents would put their children on the lap of what could easily be a pedophile. A lot of those Santa Clauses are pedophiles. Did you know that? They're old men that broken lives and they stalked little children. Oh yeah. Very filthy, unclean. And you're putting your child on the lap of a stranger. If you're contributing to that. Would you put your child on the lap of a stranger anywhere else? But yet, people do that. They'll put their children on the lap of a complete stranger. That, that blows me away. I don't understand for the life of me why parents would do that. And I will tell you that we're not very far from Babylon when we talk about Christmas, which is nothing more than Santa Neria, which is really goes back to Babylon. If you knew the truth about Santa, people, you'd understand that this goes back to Baal worship. That's right. Sitting your children on the lap is where it starts. The next thing is throwing them into the fire. Are you listening? Anybody that would put their child on the lap of a stranger... does not care about their child. They don't really care about their child. That's why we see a world today like Hillary Clinton, it takes a village. We have an adult generation that's not really adults, but we have, you know, a a generation of parents that are really not parents. Guardians that are not really guardians. Guardians. It's almost like it's a welfare state that they want everybody to take care of their child. I couldn't believe my ears when I heard that a bunch of mothers allowed their children, and we're talking the ages of eight and nine years old, go to the park by themselves. They're calling it free range children. Have you heard of it? Free range range children let them go they'll figure it out can you imagine I wouldn't let my 14 year old or 15 year old for that matter or even 16 year old do some things I don't even like the fact of them driving a car But even when they were 12 and 14 years old, I didn't let them go to the park by themselves. It doesn't matter if it's walking distance. How much distance does there need to be between the park and the house for some pedophile to come along and put them in their car and you'll never see them again? Folks, I'm still talking about Babylon here. Now, you want to talk about Pizzagate, you want to talk about all these things, but you don't want to talk about Babylon. You don't want to talk about the spirit of hell. 
that wants your child. Do you really care about your child? I saw the other day I was in a store getting something and I saw a mother with two children and her other child was behind her, behind another area of, of, of like over in another section of the store, three years old by himself. This young girl that was watching her other toddler while the other toddler was nowhere to be found and she's calling to him. He's by himself. I couldn't believe it. She'd be better off staying home. People. That's what they do though. When their husbands go off to work, they go shopping. And the little children are not being watched. If you really care about your children, you're not just going to let them do whatever they want to do. I don't even know where we, how we got onto this subject. It wasn't, so, it wasn't in the... <laughs> Praise the Lord. How many know Jesus loves the little children? Hmm? Amen. Yes, he does. Praise the Lord. In fact, he said, it would be better, it would be better for a millstone to be hanged around someone's neck and drowned in the sea than to offend one of these little ones of mine. Do you know what Jesus was saying? He says, if you put a millstone around someone's neck and throw them into the sea, they've got time to repent. But if God takes them out in the blink of an eye, they don't have time to repent. God is long-suffering, people. If you need to repent, you better do it now. Because time's running out. Amen? They just recently have in the news where they have this teacher that was found in California with this young girl that had been brought under his power, under trance, where she actually thought that what she was doing was right. She was brainwashed. At that age, you know she was brainwashed. And she's probably happy to be back home. Or maybe she hates her family so much she doesn't want to be back home. But you see these sorts of things in the news every single day now. No wonder Jesus said, watch and pray. Are you really watching? Do you have your eyes open? Do you see what's going on, people? Don't go to sleep. Don't close your eyes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Make me a servant, humble and meek. Lord, help me lift up those who are weak. May the prayer of my heart always be. Make me a servant today. Make me a servant, humble and meek. Lord, help me lift up those who are weak. May the prayer of my heart always be. 
Make me a servant today.